Well, joining me now to take a look at a tumultuous week in federal politics are MPs from the different parties. Sean Fraser is a Liberal member for the Nova Scotia riding of Central Nova. He's also the Parliamentary Secretary to the Finance Minister. Chris Dontremont is the Conservative member for the next, well, nearby riding of a Nova Scotia riding of Cent Western Nova. And Laura Collins is the NDP member for the BC riding of Victoria. All three of you, thanks for joining us. Thanks for My pleasure. Thank okay, you. well, let's start with um, Sean Fraser on behalf of the government. The talks are ongoing now in Smithers, B.C. After three weeks of disruption, of blockades, of protests, Minister Bennett and B.C. Minister Fraser are sitting down with Owet uh, What should can Canadians expect out of these meetings? There's been a lot leading up to this. What should we, what should we be watching for? Uh, obviously, there's been a number of different uh, frustrated voices in the uh, the previous few weeks over over this issue, but we're not going to get to a, a sustainable and, and durable uh, resolution without talking. Uh, so I do see these talks as a, a positive first step, uh, but it doesn't necessarily mean that uh, all of the problems that our nation is facing are going to be resolved in the immediate term. Uh, what I'm expecting to come out of these meetings is a, a, a building of trust uh, and, and hopefully uh, steps toward a resolution that will last beyond the next few days and hopefully put us in a position to actually avoid this kind of disruption uh, going forward into the future. Okay, is it your understanding that uh, these are leading up to a, a meeting with uh, the hereditary chiefs with the Prime Minister? Um, well, right now we know that the, uh, the ministers who've got the competent jurisdiction uh, are, uh, are, are the right people to be in that room. Um, I want to uh, ma make clear that uh, should a, a meeting with the Prime Minister uh, be the, uh, the necessary step to resolve the dis this dispute, I expect that that would be on the table. Uh, but I don't want to prejudge the outcome of the talks. Uh, to the extent that the solutions that, uh, that are available can be addressed uh, with the voices in the room, I wouldn't want to uh, forego those solutions just because uh, there should be another voice at the table. Uh, but I know the Prime Minister Minister is personally watching the file very closely, but I, I do have to say the uh, diligence with which uh, ministers uh, Bennett, uh, ministers Miller, uh, Blair, and uh, and Garno have been dealing with this file has been uh, nothing short of impressive for me. I know that the full cabinet is seized with this issue, and they, they have the ability to conduct these talks in a responsible way to help identify a long-term solution to the problem. Uh, Chris Dantramal, your your party's been asking for action, uh, both with regards to the blockades, but also with regards to a resolution of this situation. What do you make of where things are at now? Well, so so far, we're about three weeks too late uh, to have these discussions. It's, it's good to know they're on the ground today, actually uh, meeting with the, the Wet'suwet'en. But at the same time, this is something that could have been done a, a number of weeks ago. Uh, the ministers could have been there. The prime minister could have made himself available. And yet we've had weeks of disruptions to our rail service. Uh, Nova Scotia, the extreme ends of our country, uh, have not been able to get uh, products. Uh, propane issues is still uh, in our ridings. Uh, we're still worried about uh, access to uh, feed and other products coming through those uh, corridors. Corridors, you know, we, we need to get moving on these things, and the rule of law should be uh, followed here. I, I know the Prime Minister finally came out and uh, sort of adopted our, our, our line on this one, but you know, really, we, we've got to have people off of those rails. We can't have the unsafe situations that have been happening in the Belleville area. You know, throwing pallets on the on, on the on the rails. We, we've we've got to have some sense, sensibility happen here. Okay, Laura Collins, uh, I know you, the NDP. You've been calling for the Prime Minister. Uh, you say that he should have met with. Uh, with the hereditary chiefs weeks ago. Um, but one of the things we saw yesterday was that the matriarchs from the Wet'suwet'en, as well as some of the proponents of the pipeline, were allowed into part of the meeting yesterday. Could it not be argued that it's probably better to let them try and deal with the very complex situation before we call in the prime minister, before the, if the prime minister were to meet with them? There's a lot of groundwork to be done before. We are in a national crisis. And if the prime minister had made time weeks and weeks ago when the hereditary chiefs first asked to have this meeting, I think we would be in a very different position. And it's interesting to note that the prime minister did have time to fly around the world. He did have time to meet with the heads of big pharmaceuticals, of Suncor and Enbridge in the past couple months, but he couldn't make the time to meet with the hereditary chiefs when this is impacting not only Indigenous communities, but communities across Canada. Um, Sean Fraser, I want to ask you, uh, there's been two polls out. I mean, the Angus Reid poll out this week, and there was another poll, poll by, um, uh, which was out today, both of them showing that your government really is suffering in terms of what Canadians are thinking of the handling of this whole issue. Uh, the Angus Reid poll, as well as this blue uh, poll, uh, both said that the majority of Canadians don't think the Prime Minister handled it well, uh, and the majority of Canadians don't think the country is heading in the right direction when it comes to reconciliation. So what, 
what do you make of that? You know, it, it highlights for me what a uh, what a difficult issue this is for, uh, for for so many Canadians, regardless of your, your perspective on this issue. I think uh, virtually everyone that I, I speak to at home uh, wants the uh, the blockades to end and the economy to operate at full capacity, as I do, as our party does. Um, and most voices, though not all, uh, want to have a respectful dialogue with the First Nations communities uh, that are impacted, not just uh, in the Wet'suwet'en territory, but right across Canada. Um, the Prime Minister's uh, approach to this has been to say, you know what, we actually do need to move forward to ensure that the economic disruption does not continue. Uh, but by trying to sort of pick and choose which communities you listen to, you might set back efforts at reconciliation, which I know are, are among the very top uh, items on his priority list. Uh, so with respect uh, to, uh, to, to the polls that, uh, that you've referenced, uh, I think what we need to do is to continue to uh, ensure that our economy is working at full capacity, uh, but, uh, but we can't shortcut the road to reconciliation. Uh, we need to continue to listen to all of the different voices, Indigenous and non-Indigenous, uh, to ensure that we have a workable solution. Because we, we could show up, uh, well, I shouldn't say we, the RCMP could show up and start taking down every blockade, one of which uh, really remains in Quebec. Um, but we'd be facing very similar uh, circumstance perhaps next week, next month, next year. And we're trying to identify a path forward that's going to actually provide a long-term solution that will be able to reconcile land rights issues and Indigenous rights more broadly uh, with the need to continue to grow our economy. It's not, not an easy thing, but we're working towards it. Well, Chris, uh, Chris Dontremont, I, I didn't ask you, what do you, what does your party feel about whether the Prime Minister should be meeting with these hereditary chiefs who are opposed to the pipeline crossing their territory? Well, we've said from the start that the negotiation and discussion can go on at the same time that the RCMP are doing their job to uphold the uh, the, the law in uh, the different areas that the blockades are actually happening. You know, the, the, pr the problem we're run, running into is that it's gone over and above a, a true reconciliation discussion or a discussion with her Indigenous nations. It's turned into an issue of, you know, if you, if you do something hard enough and push it hard enough that this government will back away from uh, energy projects and, and things across this country. So, you know, we got to be able to, to have the discussion, have the reconciliation uh, discussions going on in this country because they're, they're much needed. But at the same time, we need to be able to understand that projects are important and need to go forward as well. Uh, Laurel Collins, where does your party stand on whether this pipeline should go ahead, um, given that there seems to be still considerable division within the Wet'suwet'en themselves between hereditary chiefs, between elected band councils, uh, between, the, depending on who you hear, there is a very different, there's a, a lot of division in that community. What's your party say about that? We've always said that in order for a project to go forward, it needs to have Indigenous parties at the table, that we need to go through a process of not only consultation, but that we're upholding Indigenous rights and title. That also these projects meet environmental standards, that there's benefits to the community. I think it's very obvious that right now the question of um, Indigenous title is not it, it hasn't been addressed by this government. And I sat down with Indigenous youth in my community and listened to what their concerns were. And what they told me was that they don't want to have to, f they don't want their children to have to fight for basic human rights the way that they have, their parents have, and their grandparents have. And what we've seen from this government, you know, the Prime Minister says that the relationship with Indigenous peoples is the most important relationship in Canada. And yet he is continuing to take First Nations kids to court. We still have boil water advisories on First Nations reserves across Canada. And it is it's been weeks. The hereditary chiefs have been asking for a meeting with the prime minister, nation to nation relationships for weeks, and he continues to refuse. Yet he meets with these big oil companies, he meets with these big pharmaceutical companies. Why is he prioritizing the needs of big corporations and not actually meeting with indigenous leaders? Okay, Sean Fraser, I guess one of the overwhelming questions that comes out of this is that after these meetings, preliminary or I don't know whether they're preliminary or what they lead to, but if after these meetings the clear message comes from the Wet'suwet'en hereditary chiefs that they are opposed to the pipeline over their territory, that uh, they want the pipeline redrawn, is there really a role for the federal government in all of this? Because that one, one would think that that would be a decision of the province and the company, Coastal Gas Link. 
So there's certainly, as you pointed out, serious elements of, of provincial jurisdiction. Of course, the uh, issue around permitting of the, this particular pipeline project uh, of Coastal Gas Link is, is within the, the provincial uh, government's uh, purview, uh, as is the, the actions of the RCMP who are acting as the provincial police force on this file. Uh, but that doesn't mean that there's not a, an opportunity for federal participation. If you actually go back to uh, uh, the Delgamuk decision, uh, what, a quarter century ago, uh, which you learn about in your, your first year of law school, uh, you you'll realize that the land rights uh, conversation is, uh, that uh, w was kicked off uh, decades ago uh, is, is still um, in, in its infancy in some ways. I, I think right now the, the broader issue uh, that's at play that's uh, m more properly within the purview of the federal government's uh, jurisdiction is to reconcile um, uh, di different uh, perspectives on, on what Indigenous land title, Indigenous rights uh, to land really means. Uh, this is not the kind of thing that I expect uh, will come to a, a resolution completely for forever overnight, uh, but I do think we can make serious progress that can uh, ensure our economy is allowed to uh, operate without disruption and, and con conduct these conversations in a respectful, a thoughtful and deliberate way. Uh, I don't see any other path forward uh, where uh, removing ourselves from the dialogue is going to be a, a productive event in terms of the ongoing controversy. Okay, uh, Chris Dontremont, just one last question. We still have one blockade that is functioning, uh, that is blocking rail traffic in this country and that is in Ganawaki, in Mohawk Territory in Ganawaki, just outside of Montreal. That has been up for several weeks now, that remains uh, your party position with regards to that. The, I know Quebec Premier Francois Legault has asked for intervention. The Sûreté du Québec says they're not going to intervene if the peacekeepers are not going to intervene. So it seems to be uh, static. What's your party's position on what should happen to that well, remaining blockade? I mean, ultimately, the, there should be some interventions there. I um, mean, I don't know how the discussion is going on with the, with a, with a local group. Uh, but, but ultimately, the, that is blocking the, the access to eastern Canada. And that is how uh, our, our products are, are getting to the eastern seaboard and those stuff, uh, those uh, products that are being shipped uh, through uh, through our ports uh, into central Canada so they, it needs to be solved uh, you know interventions need need to need to happen um, whether that's discussion or other I'm not too sure at this point okay last question Laura Collins if uh, coming out of these meetings we have a path forward which involves building the pipeline maybe with modifications maybe not uh, with the NDP the federal NDP because we know the provincial NDP government uh, John Horgan help strike this deal, well, is the federal NDP uh, in favor if the, if the uh, band agrees to it, the First Nation agrees to it? So fundamentally, we haven't a answered the question of whether or not the First Nations communities are on board. I am hopeful that the, this, these talks will lead to something productive. If and they were to say, if they were to say. Forward. And honestly, it is, it's been extremely disappointing to see this Prime Minister for weeks fail on his responsibility to First Nations communities and continue to refuse to meet. Okay, it's but, hard but to I mean, imagine. I'll just interrupt you. But, but, the only reason, but I'll interrupt because the only reason we want to ask the question is that one of the huge things in this whole debate has been whether is one just against pipelines or is one against pipelines that are not agreed to by the inhabitants of the region. If, these First Na if this First Nation, the Wet's Wet'suwet'en, should come to an agreement to go ahead with the pipeline, would your party be in favor of it? Fundamentally, the decisions around permits have already been made. Uh, and so the question that is up in the air right now is around Indigenous rights and around Indigenous land and title and around the uh, decisions that are made within Wissowatin territory. So that is the focus. And I, you know, when I heard my colleague from the Liberal Party say that it's it wouldn't be good to kind of step out at this point, why didn't they step in weeks ago? Right. That's my question. Would it be a yes, though, if the uh, band, uh, if the First Nation says yes? So, honestly, the the band, the First Nation band, has a number of them have said yes. We're talking about the difference between hereditary right. leadership but I mean, if, they, and if out of this meeting there is a consensus somehow formed, would you be in favor of it? For projects that have Indigenous support, that meet climate agreements, and uh, that also benefit communities, we are in support of projects. For, com for projects that do not meet those standards, which, you know, it's very clear that in this case, we, have, we don't have a path forward. And we don't have a path forward because we haven't seen leadership from our federal government, and we haven't seen that leadership from our Prime Minister. Okay, well, all three of you, I want to thank you very much for the time. Thanks for speaking with us, and we will continue to watch this, obviously, with interest as, as things continue to evolve. Thank you very much, and have a great weekend. Thank you. Thanks so much. Take care.